Welcome back to the Rebrand Podcast and the start of Season 2, Re-UMC. In the coming episodes, we're looking at what really defines the UMC as a denomination. We want to know where the UMC is now and where it is we might be going. It's no secret that our denomination is in transition. That's an understatement. But it seems like we've been saying that forever. Sometimes it feels like we're being held hostage by this waiting game we've all been stuck in. Denominations, disagreements, disaffiliations. The work being done at the general conference level is necessary and important, but it doesn't need to be all-consuming. We don't get to hit pause on the Great Commission while we sort this stuff out. Ministry must continue. The world around us certainly didn't hit pause. A global pandemic, new technology, artificial intelligence, millennial, Gen Z, now Gen Alpha. The world we're called to serve has evolved. And if we're honest, we haven't come close to keeping up with it. This season is all about sorting out when we've fallen short, where we've strayed from who we are called to be, and how we can move forward together as a denomination that's on mission creating disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It's simple. We want to rebrand the UMC. Hello and welcome to Rebrand, the podcast where we look at the world around us and try to make it a little better. In today's episode, we start a new year and a new season. Ben and I catch up after a busy Christmas season and we'll share some exciting news on the future of Rebrand. We have a lot in store for the season and this episode, so let's get started. Happy New Year, pod pal Ben. Happy New Year, Tim. Uh, you, that's you're your, so excited. That's your one pod pal of the season. We're not, we're not, we're not sticking with the pod we, pal. We are pod pals. You put it in an email and that's what we're we known are as now. Not, I did, I did one. Well, Chat GPT actually came up with pod pal. Um, uh, if you're not going to read first <laughs> uh, before you you're send right. things out. That's so. fair. That's fair. Welcome to season two. Season two. Wow. I didn't back. think they were going to pick us up again, and, and uh, they did. They greenlit a second season, and here we are. Well, after they saw the statistics of the, how many listeners did we have? 29,752. 52, okay. On average. Up. average. That was average per right, episode. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. 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 Right. It's been... Uh, gosh, we recorded the last episode. It's been over a month. Yeah. Prior to Thanksgiving, right? Oh man, we did. It's been, it's been almost two months. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot has happened since then. Um, I took a world, world this tour. This guy just like went all over Europe. I did. I did. It was, uh. I was in Dubai since then. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, you're as much of a, well, not quite. Well, I went a whole lot farther. You did. Um. You uh, uh, lost fantasy football, I heard. I did. I, guys, I did. If you, uh, oh man, I, I, in the regular season, I was undefeated against the Jones family. And then three Jones beat me during the playoffs. You, you couldn't even make it back to a game to play me. Oh. Hey, you, you finished the regular season. I was the season. one seed. Yeah. I, fi- let, I finished the regular season as a one number seed. Number one, number one, which was phenomenal because you, uh, <laughs> You you started strong, then you had a, a weak mid season, then did. you jumped back up and and finished well, finished regular season yeah, really strong, and then you you went from first to worst. No, okay, not in the league, in the playoffs. In the playoffs, that's true. Yeah, I, I mean, you it you wasn't finished, a good showing. You finished eight. The, see, the problem is, I drafted a such a good team that. They they were player they were on teams who had already locked their spot in the playoffs like the like the real playoffs yeah yeah and so they benched their starters their good their star players and my team is full of star players oh is that right and so they didn't play as much in the playoffs I got you I got you who finished second in the regular season oh some schmuck uh, uh, yeah. John, Tim. I, I believe it was the same person that dominated the entire playoffs. Well, I, I mean, you almost lost the championship. Uh, I think I won by 40 or 50. I, it, you, you need to, to look at it again. Mm, yeah. Very well. Yeah. Well, so that, yeah, that happened. There's always next year. Is there? 
Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll see <laughs> if I get an invite back. I don't know. I talked a lot of crap to the Jones family, and you, I backed it up all trash. season. Yep. And then at the end, it really came back to back to bite me in the yeah, butt. Yeah. Uh, my wife Brandy plays uh, in in fantasy football, and yeah. I've I've never seen her angry at any individual like she was angry at you <laughs> for the entire season. Uh, also. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen her celebrate as much yeah. every time you lost. I know. It I wasn't know. about who won. It was, it was only because I lost. Ben, yeah. ben needs to lose. And so. she's she's 99. I, every time I've seen her, in, she's always calm, cool, collected, mm -hmm. you know? and That's what everyone says. That's I, I think that's true. And I guess it's just something about fantasy Some, football. No, it's something about Ben Smith. <laughs> Something about Ben Smith gets do, under her skin. I, you know, I'm a competitor at heart. I, <laughs> I enjoy some some uh, competition, friendly or otherwise. Yep. yep. Yeah. So good Christmas. It was a good Christmas. Yeah, I had uh, the whole family and both both sides of the family, mom's side of the family, dad's side of the family were in town. Uh, my brother and sister stayed at my house, which was cool. So oh, we got nice. to go do the family thing, and then. Come back to my house and and uh, you know uh, de de stress from yep. the family thing. <laughs> yep, yep. No, yep. it was great. Uh, we uh, love having the family in, so that was that was really good. You had your Christmas over in uh, who knows a uh, ten different cities across Europe. Well, we started here. Uh, so Tyler, my son, and and his wife Anna came over. Uh, excuse me, Christmas morning, and we celebrated, and then they took us to the airport. And we flew out, took um, a few days in Switzerland, took a scenic train through the Swiss Alps, which mm. uh, if that's not on your bucket list, uh, I highly recommend that go on everyone's bucket list. It was yeah. beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, went from there to Milan, uh, Italy, which is not too awful far, <coughs> which is not too far from where Brooke lives. Um, and, Brooke, uh, Brooke, Brooke is your daughter, Brooke, my daughter, yep. uh, she'd been on the podcast once. Shout out. Um, uh, we, she doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> so we don't need to shout she her is out. A, she is our one international listener. Okay. So I think she uh, just watches the highlights on, uh, probably. on, on uh, Instagram. <laughs> she doesn't listen to the full episodes. Uh, we're not going to put this in a, in a highlight. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll do a test. So, Brooke, if you're listening right now, <laughs> let us know that you heard our shout out. Otherwise, we know she's that, a fake that's fan. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so we uh, we spent some time in Milan, went back to uh, Aviano, which is where she lives. It's actually Sicile is where she lives and spent New Year's Eve at her place, mm. which was really cool because as midnight struck, we w walked out onto her uh, little deck area. She has an apartment with a, a balcony. And there were fireworks everywhere. It wow. wasn't professional fireworks. It was oh, okay. everyone shooting backyard, them off. Yeah, fireworks. yeah. But I mean, the, hundreds because there's not really any mountains close to her uh, or hills. It's yeah. pretty flat, so you could not just like see fireworks yeah. Yeah. everywhere. And 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 that was the first time I'd seen that, and uh, and it was really cool. So we went from there to uh, Paris. Went to Disneyland, Paris. Wow. Not a big Disney guy, but it, I would definitely go back. It's beautiful. It was the best Disney park that I've been to. Whoa. Um, You've been to Disney World? Uh, Disney World. You've been to Disneyland? Disneyland, California. And this one was and better. Disneyland, wow. uh, Paris. Yeah. Wow. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, from there, visited the Louvre, which was crazy Whoa. because it was uh, the busiest day um, that they have. Of the Louvre. Wow. Yeah, because they take it's the only time the Louvre is closed for consecutive days. Ah, and they were closed. It was either three or four consecutive days, and it reopened the day that I was there. And um, that was always a bucket list, but that was a little bit uh, rough on me because I I couldn't do a whole lot. wasn't uh, able to see as much. Yeah, but from there, it's spent some time in London funny, and came back. Funny enough, I yeah. uh, on this on this break was also at the Louvre, but I was at the Louvre Abu Dhabi in the in the UAE. Oh, that's right. I so forgot about that. The UAE paid an obscene amount of money to be able to have their own Abu Dhabi or their own uh, Louvre, and so we went to the. My sister and I, when we were there, went to the Louvre 
Abu Dhabi, which is not an art museum. It's a historic, it's a history museum. Oh, okay. Um, so it was cool. It was the, the exhibits were fine. The building is beautiful. Yeah. Um, but you know, so we were both at the Louvre. Well, we're starting a new year. Yep. Um, both, both, uh, personally and professionally. What are some, um, I, I mean, uh, resolutions are cliche, but what are some, what are some things you are, looking forward to in the, in this, in this coming year or things that you want to try to do better or, or add to, to your professional life. Yep. Yep. So I've got two major ones that, that I'm really focused on. Um, three, if you add a, a, a life goal, the, the life goal, and I, I want to get in better shape and, and eat healthier. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people have a weight loss goal and, and things like that. And I guess that's part of it, but I, I really just want to have a healthier lifestyle in sure. general, uh, because, and, and a lot of that has come out of this travel. Uh, we've enjoyed it so much and I want to make sure that I can continue doing that mm. for as long as I can. So, yeah. uh, that, that's my, my lifestyle or life goal, uh, professionally, two things. Um, I'm, I'm working on, uh, better time management, mm. uh, is going yeah. to be a, a yeah. major goal for me because as we talked about, in the last season, and and as everyone knows, we've entered into a general conference year, uh, what? A, a <laughs> jurisdictional <laughs> That's year. That's crazy. Yeah. And and there's all kinds of things that uh, we have going on in Holston. And um, before I left on the trip, I, I left really stressed out. Mm. Um, and and having some time away and being able to gain perspective, I realized you know this is going to be the year that I learned to say no, or at least we need to wait on yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's a goal. And, and the other thing is I want to write more. Oh, um, I'm, I'm planning on taking some time after we get through general conference and jurisdictional and annual conference, all that, yep. uh, taking a little bit of time to get away and, and just focus on some writing. So that's, that's my three major things. What yeah. about you? Well, um, in the in the short term, it, personally, for the month of January, yeah. I'm doing vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. How's so it going? No meat. It's been good so far. This is we're recording on the 11th, um, and it's it's been pretty good so far. The last several months was a slow uh, removing of of meat yeah. from my diet, so it wasn't like a whole like cold turkey like a all cold at once thing. Yep. Um, Can you say cold but, turkey if you're getting rid of meat? No, I probably shouldn't. It it wasn't like a whole cold tofu situation. <laughs> 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 Tofurky, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's been it's been fine. I I've been for the most part. No, I, I I've been not not so much doing the meat replacements. So like yeah. impossible meat, beyond meat, you know those things. But just like vegetable forward or legume forward um, meals and entrees. So yeah. it's been, it's been good. It, it, it isn't any, it isn't really harder or, um, less, less filling or less, uh, I mean, if anything, the, it's been like better food, better tasting food. Yeah. It just forced me to be more intentional about my food, mm -hmm. which was kind of part of the whole thing anyway, to just be intentional about what I'm eating and where it comes from and what it's doing to my body. So it's been fine. It's been good. Professionally, yeah. um, looking at, at, uh, at my work, I think, um, this year I'm this, this, I, I told myself, I told you yep. this year is pedal to the metal. I'm, I'm not, not that I'm saying yes to everything, but I'm, my goal is to, to do more. Gotcha. Um, what do you mean? So a, a lot of that, a, a big part of my job is, is content creation. Uh-huh. And, and in the last, I've been here almost two years at Holston, which is wild. Um, so it's probably time for me to go. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's been a long time ago, but whatever. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I am glad though, that you finally have decided to work this yeah, year. That's, so that, I, I'm I appreciate gonna, that. I'm going to live up to expectations <laughs> and do my job. Easy that's now. my New Year's Easy resolution. Now. <laughs> Expectations are pretty I'm gonna low. I'm going to start doing my job in the new year. <laughs> no, I think it just means um, producing more content. So, okay. and, and and it doesn't necessarily, I think I have a tendency to work things up into a bigger deal than they need to be. And, okay. And plan, over plan, or um, 
or or just kind of think too much about stuff. And so I end up not doing as much because I'm stressed about about making this the best possible thing that it could be. And that slows me down a lot. Yeah. Um, so uh, right now, I, the the mindset that I'm having is produce something every day. So it could okay. be graphic design, it could be video, it could be written, it could be, you know, whatever. I mean, and it could be for um, Holston Communications, it could be for one of our departments, it could be for rebrand, it could be for, I mean, maybe it's just like something I'm doing personally. Right. But just create something in that day. Okay. Maybe it sucks and I don't share it. Sure. That's fine. But I, as long as I did it, just do something, take yeah. something to, to completion, finish something that day. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I think that'll be good. Um, and then the, the other thing is, um, here in the office, I've decided to, I've moved around. Well, you talked about time management, right? Um, I think a big switch that I'm doing, I went from last year. I was, I did a lot of like half day at home, half day in the office. Uh -huh. I, I would come in for meetings to film with people to, uh, to have, you know, whatever, whatever needed, uh, whatever needed me here in the office. And then I would go home. I didn't really have an office spare workspace here. Right. Other than the studio. Um, and I found that that just wasn't a productive use of my time because I'm going back and forth between home and work, yep. which is like a 30 minute commute. It's not that far, but when you're doing it every day, it's, it's not nothing. Yeah. Um, and I just bouncing from home to, to work and back, I didn't have large blocks of time, um, to do creative work. And, and so my goal this year is to do, to have like whole days in the office and whole days at home Yeah, yeah, that makes um, sense. or, you know, whatever needs to happen to be able to get larger blocks of time to do creative work. Yeah. So if I'm going to be doing, if I'm going to be producing content every day, small, you know, large or small, um, I got to have like set aside time to do right. that because that kind of stuff doesn't happen in the 20 minutes here and 10 minutes here and, and, you know, 45 minutes here, you got to have a block of time to get in a, in a creative mindset to be able to do that where at least I do. Maybe yeah. some people yeah. are better at multitasking than, than I think multitasking is kind of a sham anyway. <laughs> I agree. hundred so, percent. I, I know a lot of people don't, a lot of people, um, feel like they can, um, I, I admit wholeheartedly, I cannot multitask. No. Uh, if, if I try, uh, instead of having one thing that is at least average, I'm going to have two things or more that are really bad. Yep. yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. <clears throat> so we're starting a year here in Holston and in the Southeastern jurisdiction yep. and in the, um, in the denomination at large, this is I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this might be the most um, jam-packed year Shoot, that we yeah, have had yeah. at every level. Yeah. In certainly as long as I've been working or, um, you know, an active member of, of the denomination. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah, wholeheartedly. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a year where we have tons of things scheduled with the different themes or the the different aspects that we have going on at Holston um, with, uh, of course, our annual conference theme. Uh, we've got new voices that uh, is, is taking place that we're working with. Um, we've got uh, all this information that's going to be coming out this year, talking about passionate, spiritual, whatever, whether it's discipleship, leadership, group, uh, congregation. We, yep. we talked some about this last year. Uh, Bishop has been traveling around to districts talking about Hope Abounds, which kind yeah. of wraps that into yeah. the uh, into things. We've got southeastern jurisdiction, um, and we're in our bicentennial year. Yeah, welcome, in, in Holston, hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, happy, happy two hundred <laughs> bicentennial. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and so we know those things are happening. Yeah, on the reg, but then. Because of general conference, because of jurisdictional conference, because of annual conference, always, we have the things that just pop up. Yeah. And and in communications, um, those are the the stop the presses type things. Yeah. We, we can be working on video editing or working on the podcast or working on whatever, and something comes out and, and we literally have to pause <laughs> everything to, to work on something else. And, and sometimes that's 15 minutes 
but that 15 minutes causes an hour disruption. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's a four hour yeah. disruption. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, and, and a, a big, a big project that we're working on and, and it probably it, it may not be time to hold, to really release it in, in, uh, in, in full, but a big project that you and I have been working on is, um, an idea to kind of pull all of those things that are happening in Holston together. Yes. Um, and kind of under one big umbrella to yeah. be able to, um, you know, so that they can all work off of each other. We, we found that um, in Holston having um, an annual conference theme, a, a big giving campaign theme, um, a, a district new mission vision. scheme, a new mission and vision, all of these different things that in any other year would be priority one, they're all happening in yep. one year. Yep. And there's no way I can't keep them track. I can't keep track of them. And this is what I do for a living. Yep. This is what I spend all of my time doing. Yeah. There's no way that our members at our local churches have any, I mean, you know, it's a lot to ask for them to know one of them. We yeah. can't ask them to know all of them. So um, we have a, a plan at the, that's going to be rolling out in the yeah. coming weeks and months that we're, I'm excited to, to really kind of bring all of that together and and hopefully it's the it's a you know some of your parts better than the it's a whole better that the the the, uh, the sum is better than the <laughs> tell me what it is here what is uh, it's it's better uh, than the sum of its parts that's right the whole yeah, yeah it'll be yeah, I, yeah. I almost landed it almost. I was there <laughs> you know the the other thing though you mentioned people just knowing about it and and a lot of times that's the best we can do is, is get information out so people know about it. But what we really want to do is help people understand the why and, and begin to care about it. Yeah. And, uh, that, that may, you know, that ramps it up, that takes it up another level as far as yeah. how you market yep. and yep. how you describe things and, um, how you get the information out. So yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff. And, and, indeed, indeed. And you know, this, this season of rebrand, we are making a conscious step um, beyond Holston or, or we're widening our scope. Yep. Um, so, so much of what we're going to be talking about is about the denomination at large. Right. And we already have some listeners, some viewers um, beyond Holston, but uh -huh. I, I would hope that as our, um, as our area of focus expands, so too would our audience. So, I mean, there's a lot happening beyond the bounds of Holston here as well. So we have, general conference coming up yep. and there's news coming out all the time now. And it's only going to get more and more, um, contents only going to coming out more and more, right. um, leading up to general conference. So, um, it, man, it's going to be a busy it year. Is. It is. So let, let's, bef before we end this segment, let's talk about rebrand resolutions too, as, as Whoa. far as okay. what's, what's kind of new coming out yep. of rebrand. You know, one of the things that, that we discussed um, was uh, we want to be a little bit more on on topic. Sure. Uh, and uh, we, no more vacation episodes. No more. Va except, uh, I except guess we just one. talked about vacation <laughs> for 20 minutes. Uh, we we want to have fun for yeah. sure. Um, but but we also want to to be as informative and transformative as mm. as we can be. Good oh, words. look. That's nice. I, I got a facial recognition out of mm. you for that. That's uh, yeah. that's something else. So um, Ben has been working hard, and I give him full credit for this, to help us uh, kind of reel in and 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 be more consistent on the, the podcast. So why don't you talk to us about what the upcoming year is going to or season is going to look like from that standpoint? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think a big part of, well, let's, let's, a, a, a communication strategy that <laughs> uh, is so important is, is the idea of um, creating expectation mm -hmm. and then breaking it. So y you can't do something unexpected until you create expectation. Right. So you build structure, you get people used to what's supposed to happen. And once you do that, that's a tool in itself. And then you get another tool, you open up you know, your, your, your side quest over here that says, well, now I have this new tool that I can break expectation. I can do something unexpected and people pay specific attention to that. Yep. So we didn't employ any of that last season. Last season was throw spaghetti at the wall. 
and do a different thing every every episode, which can be fun, but it may be a little chaotic. And sometimes people get overwhelmed by um, just the unknown of what's going to happen in an episode. Right. So a big um, a, a big focus for me and and in the way that we've kind of laid out the season is it's going to be planned. It's going to be structured. <laughs> There's going to be a beginning, a middle, an end. There's going to be transitions. You're going to know the general flow of an episode. I'm not going to lay out for you what that is. It's right. going to be natural, but you're going to be able to tell. I mean, I think we we've put some more time in the pre-production yeah. um, of this season. And, and I really do think that's going to show um, it makes it so that we can do justice to the work that we're trying to do. I mean, the, the topics that we want to talk about this season are pretty serious. They're, <laughs> they're pretty heavy. Um, and they're consequential to the future right. of our denomination. Yep. And and it would be a disservice to um, not to do the work that that we are committed to doing. So yes. um, I'm excited for that. And I, I think as a it, it I think there's also probably just going to be a little bit more of a serious tone to this season. Um, we're not goofing off quite as much. Um, and yeah, we're talking about some, we'll of, some of the topics that we're <laughs> that we're we're going to broach will just be a little bit more. Um, they're going to have a little bit more meat to them. Yeah. Which is funny because I'm now a vegetarian. Um, <laughs> but, you know, as a, as an external sign of that internal um, dedication, I have made the, the decision, sacrificial decision. I will keep my microphone on the stand. What? For the duration of this season. Is that a promise or is, is that a, a hope? It's a promise. It's a resolution. A, a resolution. Okay. And resolutions are meant to be broken. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, uh, for now, I'm committed to it. Yep. yep. Um, so, you know, I got w- the biggest point of feedback that I got all season long, once we started video, halfway through the season, was, Ben, why don't you use a stand? Is what, Tim doesn't give you a stand like like you're the one that would give me a stand. First of all, I gave Tim his stand, so back off. Somebody said, "Do you need a? Do we need a like crowdfund for you to be able to buy a stand?" No, I was like part of my thing. It's part of my. See, that's that's your problem. Anytime someone asks you, "Do you want us to give you money?" No matter what it is, you just say, say yes. yes. Yeah, thank you. Actually, that, that's true. This stand was brought to you by. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. There's not even. I had this stand already. It was always next to me. You saw the stand. I just didn't use it. <laughs> but you know what? We're, that's not the focus. I'm not the. I'm not the focus. Decrease me so please, he can be increased. Please you know? keep telling yourself that. <laughs> please, that that will make both of our lives better. If using a, a mic stand will get our listeners to focus on the more important the things, the content, yeah. then I'm willing to make that sacrifice. All right. Well, so, that, that is, that's an admirable sacrifice. So we are going to have a little bit different structure, but we will still have fun. But when we come back, we're going to chat about what's wrong with the UMC, Yep. how it happened, mm-hmm. and what can we do about it. All right, so season two is now in full swing. Uh, we're, we're chatting about what's wrong with the UMC. Uh, we're going to talk about how it happened and what we can do about it. Uh, first of all, let, let's talk about why we chose to even go this route in general. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of, I, I think it's, it is easy for it to sound alarmist. Sure. Um, and so I, you know, in, in planning and, and preparing for this, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't that, that we weren't just taking advantage of people's emotions and, and love for a denomination that they, many, many of, of these people grew up, many of our listeners Absolutely, grew up yeah. in the denomination. So we're not trying to just feed off of people's anxiety here, but, um, you know, we, we said it in the intro, I think we have pushed pause on a lot of the work mm-hmm. that we are called to do while we sort out some of our own internal um, disagreements. Yeah. Um, and and I, I don't want to belittle the work that's happening at, at the general not. conference level. Right. Right. Um, I think I'm, I am certainly am, am very passionate about the work that's happening there and it is necessary and good and good. Um, but 
that doesn't mean that we can't stop doing the ministry work um, that the UMC has has is called to do and yeah. ha- and has done for uh, generations for um, hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, so you know, I I think that um, we can look back at a history in the UMC, and there's a lot to be proud of. Absolutely. The UMC has been a an incredible force for good in uh-huh. the world. Now, we certainly have made mistakes, and there are some stains in the history of the UMC. Definitely. As there are with any institution. Right. And I think this season we're, we may touch on some of that. Sure. Um, but if you look back through history, and, and in Holston we've been doing this, especially um, recently because we've been – preparing to celebrate the bicentennial, the 200th anniversary yeah. of our conference um, as, a, as, as the Holston Conference. And if you look through history, you can see a season of abundance, a season yes. of um, success, of growth, of um, exuberance, of excitement, of people um, having God-sized dreams uh-huh. and, then, and then making, ri- making real dreams of them, you know, like carrying them out. And, and I, I think about it this way. Um, many of our UMC, uh, longtime UMCers are familiar with St. Simon's Island, sure. Georgia, yep. Epworth by the sea. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a UMC property um, where they've been doing uh, gatherings, conferences, uh, you know, camps, yep. all kinds of meetings for I don't know, a long time. <laughs> right. In, in, in fact, as this episode is being released, our cabinet yeah. is currently is at right St. Simon's yeah. to, uh, to do some work. We were there, the, the both of us were there last year uh-huh. or two, last year. Last year. For the, the same event, for the mm-hmm. cabinet, um, for, for the, um, well, at, it was for a different event, for, for, SC, for SEJ. But I remember going there and, and you and I did a lot of the, of the production right. for that for that week and seeing the equipment, the setup, the space, um, both from like their production equipment, but also with their cafeteria, their grounds, their buildings. Um, it was so clear that it was the best of the best from when it was built. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I couldn't tell you when it was built, you know, do some research. I guess I could have done some research. <laughs> um, but now in 2024, right. Holy cow. It's 2024. Yeah. In 2024, that stuff is so outdated. Right. <laughs> it was it it made our job so much more difficult mm-hmm. in that space because the equipment was outdated. Yes. The things that we were trying to do, the things that were required of us to do. Right. Um because of the people who were who we were working with, mm-hmm. because of the nature of culture. <laughs> yes. Yep. Were they were they were non-negotiables. They they needed we needed to zoom in. Bishop Bickerton needed to speak to the group, and he couldn't be there. We needed to zoom him in. Right. We needed so we needed screens. We needed cameras. We needed internet. None of that was easy in that space. Right. It was the best of the best from a season long past. Yes. And those kind of things are all over our denomination. It is. We used to be. The best of the best. Yes, and not not you know I don't care about um, you know flaunting what you know whatever we we I'm not doing it for showmanship here. We, we used to do amazing ministry. Yes, and we are still doing good ministry now. I, I'm not saying that there's no in good pockets. things happening in pockets. Yes, but as a denomination, I think there is this sense of of um, desperation mm-hmm. just to survive. Yeah. We are waiting to see what's going to happen. We are enduring now so that down the road we can get back to doing what we used to do. Yes. And all of that is the opposite of the way we need to be thinking. I agree. I agree. Now, the good thing about this is it's not just our denomination. No. In fact, it's it's biblical. If you go all the way back to the beginnings of the Hebrew people coming together, you see this exact same cycle that takes place where uh, there is an abundance and there is a great faith in God and, and, and working with God and doing some miraculous things. And then there 
there comes a point where people get so caught up in themselves and in mm. the culture and what's going on, whatever it may be, that they lose sight and they, they lose uh, focus on their relationship with God. And, and that's where we have these, these major pitfalls and these, these things that happen uh, that causes uh, destruction, that causes uh, things to, to break up and to fall apart. And, and then there's a season of revival. And during that season of revival, uh, God is is made new again or made known again, mm. and, and and this abundance comes back, and this continues to happen over and over and over, and then we have Jesus come, and and the same thing is going on with with the Pharisees. The Pharisees have gotten so caught up in their legalism, in their things that they know this is right, this is wrong, this is black, this is white, this is what we've got to do. It's all about this. And they've lost the focus Mm -hmm. of what it means to be a follower of God and what it means to be a disciple. And and Jesus comes and reminds them of the great commandment from the get-go to love others uh, to love God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, which is the great Shema from the very beginning. We have that in Deuteronomy with mm-hmm. uh, Moses. And then the the second part of that is to love our neighbor as ourself. And then, of course, as you've mentioned, uh, Jesus goes through the ministry uh, uh, here on earth, and as he's leaving the disciples, ascending to heaven, gives the great commission yep. uh, to make disciples of all the world. And, and it's, it's that reminder, I believe, it's a reminder of look at our history, look at our past. We see these cycles, but we always have to move our focus back to what it means to make disciples um, of, of Jesus, of God, and, and to spread that love of God and love of people around the world. Yeah, definitely. I look to our denomination and and what defines us as Methodists, Mm -hmm. as United Methodists. And the things that I value most about our denomination, and I think the things that set us apart from other other Christian groups, denominational or otherwise, those things can be huge assets Uh and and forces to do ministry more effectively than, than could be done um, otherwise, but they can also be roadblocks. They can also be sure. stumbling blocks. You know, I look to the connectional nature of our denomination. Yes. The Methodist Church, the United Methodist Church, has always been a global church that functions as a unit. Uh huh. Now, I would say we are less connected than we have, have been since the, um, since the combining of denominations to, to form the UMC. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something we're going to talk about. But something that comes with that connection, when we work on a connectional structure like we do, there is disagreement. There, yeah. There is bound to be, and that's a good thing. That can be a quality. Sure. But that also leads to us having to spend time sorting out our differences. Right. And coming to terms with what we're okay with disagreeing about uh-huh. and what we're not okay with disagreeing about. That's necessary, but we can't let that prevent us from doing the real work. Absolutely. If, if the structure that we have, if the religion that we have gets in the way of doing ministry, it is no longer a tool, but a roadblock. That's right. I believe in the structure of the UMC. I believe in the connection. That's why I'm a Methodist. That's yes. why I work for the United Methodist Church, but it's broken. <laughs> Definitely parts, for sure. Parts of it. For sure. Yeah. Um, but it's fixable. Absolutely. And, and I, that's... Wh- we wouldn't be talking that's about That's exactly this. right. We wouldn't be doing this if we, <laughs> if we, were, if we gave up. That's right. And, and, and so throughout this season, that's what we want to deal with. We want to look at, at characteristics of the denomination um, and, and glance back at the past to where and 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 show and, and remind ourselves of where it was strong, mm-hmm. but we also want to 
update our tools like mm. you were talking about. We we want to not rely on what happened 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago and try to repeat it in that manner. We've got to look at where we're at in culture today, in our society today, and how can we meet the needs of our neighbors, showing that love to our neighbors while we stay in the process of loving God with our heart, mind, strength, soul, body, everything that we yeah. have. So each episode, we're going to look at a different one of these characteristics yep. of, of our denomination that we believe needs to go through some transformation. Right. Um, and like you said, sometimes we're going to look back at, at a time where we did that really well in the uh -huh. past. Some of them, I think we've never done well. <laughs> Maybe and, so. And yeah. so there are some things that looking ahead, we need to, to do anew. <laughs> Right. Not to to return, but to start anew. So we're going to look, I, you know, I mentioned from survive to thrive. Uh -huh. I think that's a theme for the whole season. So all of these, I think we're moving from a place of merely surviving as a denomination to thriving as Christ followers. Our, I'm going to try to get it right here. Our mission here in Holston is to create passionate spiritual disciples. That work comes above all the structure. It comes above yeah. all of the, um, all the internal conflict that work needs to happen. Yes. And that's the kind of thriving work that we right. need to be working towards. Some other things that I think that, that we will look at through the season, um, we'll look at going from scarcity to abundance. We've uh -huh. talked about that a little bit. We'll look at going from selfish to selfless. Yes. I think part of desperation when we're desperate by human nature when we are desperate we are selfish yes absolutely when we are desperate we think about ourselves yes and as churches as as local churches as deno as a denomination we start to um hoard <laughs> and <laughs> and we start to think about ourselves and what what makes us comfortable and what we need to continue doing what we've been doing that is contrary to the Great Commission. That Absolutely. is contrary to what we are called to do as Christ followers. We are called to be selfless to think about others. Right. Sometimes at the expense of our comfort. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and another way to look at that is, is from uh, being exclusive to being inclusive. Yeah. And, and we, we've all heard those sermons um, uh, or messages where we've we've talked about the church being a, a country club and mm -hmm. a, a members only type thing, and, and we we've, we've got to kill that, right? Yeah. I mean that that has to go. Otherwise, um, we're we're wasting our time. Yep, yep. And you know, I think that this moves into that area of something that maybe we haven't ever done really well. Um, I think that when we look at the at at the um, quality of inclusion that we aspire to have. Uh -huh. We've never done that um, in to perfection. No. And, and perhaps we never will. Humans are flawed. Sure. <laughs> um, but I do think we are doing it better now than we ever have. Yeah. Um, I think we have moved from, and we're going to talk more about that. We're going to have a whole episode about this. We've moved from um, exclusivity to tokenism. Yeah, you're right. And so I think now, if we're looking at what do, what are we doing now, what is a characteristic of the UMC that we have now, and where would we like to be, I think that looks like tokenism to inclusion. Yes, yeah. Tokenism is better than telling people they don't have a place at all. True. <laughs> but it's a small step in the right direction. Barely, yeah. A lot right. of work to you're do. Right. You're right. Um, and I, but I do think that's where we're at. Another one, and, and this is maybe some some jargon, some internal language, and we're going to dig into it. Heroic solo leader to team. Yes. Or put more simply, me to us. Right. We look at the connectional nature of the UMC, and we've pulled away from that some. There's a lack of trust yeah. in our conference, in our denomination, in our jurisdiction, in our society, and in our world, right? Like right. It, it, right. It's everywhere. There's right. a lack of trust. Um, but if we are committed to staying together as a denomination, if we as churches, as conferences are committed to a denomination, we need to trust each other and we need to lean on each other because why else are we, why else are we connected yeah. if we're not going to do ministry together? Yeah. 
Absolutely. We need to get back to that. I think that is something that we did really well in the past. Yeah, there there have definitely been high times for that, for sure. Um, and, and when we do some of this, too, one of the things that I would like for us to to dive into a little more than what we did in the first season, or maybe a lot more than the first season, is is some of the theology mm. behind some of this. And, and when we talk about um, the heroic solo leader versus a, a, a team or, or relational versus uh, independent, mm. uh, we're able to look directly at the beginning, going back to where when when God created humanity, it says in Genesis, let us make humanity mm. in our image. And there's all kinds of theology that we can talk about, whether that's Trinitarian, whether that is uh, a whole host of, of beings with God, whatever it may be. But regardless of what it is, there's God already in the beginning before humanity is in a relational state and working together in yeah. some form or fashion. And and so we'll, we'll take a look at things like that as well. Yeah. This guy went to divinity school. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's uh that's good. And that's important. So, so these are the things that, that we're going to dive into uh, in, in this season. And we're going to take some of the things we've just spoken about and, and dedicate uh, full segment two, full episode two. Um, and uh, the the big thing is uh, we don't know. We don't have the answers. Uh, we just want to talk about it, and we yeah. want conversation to, uh, to, to be out there. And um, we just want to speak into it. And we know that others want to, to speak into it because these are conversations that we're having anyway, right? I mean, a, a lot of times it's it's one on one, and and maybe we don't go in depth in in everything, but it's it's things that we want to say, and it's things that we all want to see happen, uh, because like you've said, this is a denomination that we we love. Uh, it's a de- denomination that has helped shape us into the people that we are today, and we want that to continue because we we believe. There are good things um, left within the United Methodist Church to help build those disciples and make make those disciples. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're doing this. And I, I think, and I'll leave it at this. I won't say any more for this episode. I think we've we've I'm I'm a little depressed after this episode. Um, we've talked a lot about the flaws that we see. The rest of the season, I believe, is going to be really hopeful. Absolutely. Um, I think that we needed to do some of this uh, groundwork to identify the problem. And moving forward, we're going to touch on parts of that. And then the bulk of our of, of our time is going to be on dreaming about how how a better denomination could be. Yeah. What what we could do. What what does it look like and how do we get there? Yeah. That is exciting. Absolutely. That makes me excited yeah. um, to do that and, and to talk about that. You said it, we are not going to affect this change right, by right. ourselves um, or anytime soon. This is long work and it's it's work that everyone is going to need to be involved with. So if if you have thoughts on this stuff, I bet you do. If you st- if you stuck around this long, you're in it. You're you know, you're in the trenches with That's us. Right. So be a part of the conversation, whether it's with us or with others like this is work that needs to happen. Yes. And it starts from every point, from yep. every level. It top down, side to side, bottom to top. If we are all committed to bringing about some of this change, that's how it's going to happen. That's how we make a difference. So start talking about it with us, with other people. We, I mean, we started at the at the beginning of the episode. We're we're going to be all over the place this year. We're going to be at surprise. We're going to be at conferences. <laughs> we're going to be at trainings. We're going to be at general. Oh, you mean physically? I thought you. I thought you meant just our regular. Yeah, we're all, all the over above. the place. We're going to be. We're going to a Fresh Expressions conference yeah. next month. We're going all over the place. If you see us, like, hit us up. You know. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to have you on the podcast, maybe. Absolutely. We want to hear your thoughts. Well, and, and another thing is we've got these outlets. We've got Instagram, Rebrand Pod. Uh-oh. Rebrand underscore pod. Dang it. Rebrandpodcast.com. Yes. Uh, drop us a note in there because a, another thing that we can do is at, at the beginning of each podcast, we can always touch 
on the previous podcast and let yeah. people know your thoughts as well as, as far as, hey, uh, why didn't you talk about this? Or here's an idea. This is something that we're doing. We would love to share stories of what's going on in your life and in your church uh, that can help continue to make this transformation back into abundance. And we want this conversation to happen beyond the bounds of Holston, yes. beyond the bounds of our conference. So especially if you are um, elsewhere in the Southeastern jurisdiction, um, in other jurisdictions across uh, across the world, we want this conversation to grow far beyond us um, and and to, to happen really across our denomination. Um, so reach out and 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 join in with us, please, please, please. Yeah, and let us know because again, we we are centralized to Holston. That's what we're talking about, and and we may have it way off base in your area, and we would love to hear what you have to say and what's going on, especially if it's different than what we're experiencing here. Yep. So, how can they get in touch with us? Yep. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at rebrand underscore pod. You can smash that follow button, <laughs> ring that bell. <laughs> Ugh. Um, you can email us at rebrand at holston.org. You can check our website out at rebrandpodcast.com. That's all we have for today. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Until then. Oh, you got me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.